We saw how we cleared a, a new array and assigned values to it, but we can see different uh, ways to assign a arrays or have arrays in assignments. So the first one is uh, what you saw here. We uh, declare a, an array, x, very clever name, and put in two values, foo and bar. And then we have another array co having moose and uh, barney in uh, uh, it has values. Now if we are creating, if we are, if we are creating a new array called at z, and assigning to it a list where the two elements of that list are two arrays. Then what happens in Perl is that Perl takes the content of these two arrays, the four values, flattens them out and puts all the four values into at z. So Perl doesn't create, at this operation, Perl doesn't create a um, two-dimensional array or something uh, like this, or list of lists, or what, might, what you might expect in some other languages. The way Perl behaves is that it takes the arrays and flattens them out and copies all the values to this new array. And then strengthens it copies. So after the assignment, there's no relation to the first element of the array, of the Z array, and the first element of the X array, which have are the same value, but they're separated. So if you change one of them, the other one doesn't change. Now there's an, an, uh, another example here. We have a scalar value, dollar owner, moose. Uh, we have a couple of tenants, uh, which is an array, so it's foo and bar. And as you can see, I'm using here qw, just so you can get used to different ways of writing arrays. But in fact, this puts two values, foo and bar, into this array. And then we create a list of people, or actually an array of people. And the array of people will contain the values that are, first of all, the content of owner, which is moose, then the string buzz, and then flattening out the content of tenants, which has foo and bar in it. So this array, people, will have four values in it, moose, buzz, foo and bar. And then the last example here is... Uh, First of all, we can declare variables, multiple variables, in a list. As you saw earlier, we can do that with scalars, but you can also have arrays in this list. So this is this way we just declare the values, the variables. Then we can have uh, arrays also inside the assignment on the left-hand side. So we have a, le an a list here with two elements. The first element is a $x scalar, and the second element is at y. And we call the function f that we used earlier that will return, in this case, let's say, four values. So what happens? $x is a scalar. So it can contain exactly one value. So the first value here from the list will be assigned to this x. On the other hand, at y is an array. So it can contain any number of values. And that means that all the rest of the values, 2, 3, 4, in our case, will be assigned to this array. As you can see, Perl dynamically allocates enough space for this array. So even though here at where we declare you didn't see how big it should be, it was actually empty. But here when we assign value, it will grow the array. So as you can see, a scalar can get one value and an array can get any number of values it wants. So what happens if we assign here the same function, but on the left hand side we have, after the scalar, we have two arrays. Well, the first value goes to the $x, that's as earlier, but then this at y can have as many values as it wants. So it will take all the values, 2, 3, 4 in this case, and those all will go into the at y. And what happens with at z? It will be empty. It will become empty if it, if it had some value in it, but it doesn't. It didn't, didn't have any leftover values, so it will just be empty. So be careful. You, usually, you wouldn't write such thing. I'm just showing it so you can explain it. If you really wanted to make a, an array empty, then it would be a much more straightforward way just to say the array should be empty.